the Nigerian government last week announced preferred bidders for 10 power distribution firms following the approved bids for five power plants. However, companies who lost out and labor unions say the process was fraudulent and the results should be scrapped. The Bureau of Public Enterprise has called a press conference to clarify this. Lastly, the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts has asked the Debt Management Office to create a debt ceiling for state governments as their appetite for raising funds through the bond market increases. That's according to this day newspaper. Now, a rundown of the 15 states which have sought funding from the capital market show that Lagos tops the chart with 275 billion naira bond issues. And of course, we'll continue to delve into this story. Now, as state governments' uh, appetite uh, for raising funds through the bond market grows, a Senate committee on local and foreign debts, like I just said, has requested the debt management office to create a debt ceiling for them. However, in a response to the request, the Director General of the DMO, Mr. Abraham Nwanko, said that his office was already working together with other regulatory institutions to check excessive uh, bond issues by state governments. Now, joining me on the line to talk about this is Ayo Teriba. He's the CEO of Economic Associates. Uh, Mr. Teriba, great to have you on the show. Now, what are your thoughts on this request uh, for a debt ceiling uh, uh, for the states? Uh, is this debt ceiling necessary in your opinion? Well, um, debt ratios would make more sense than, than debt ceilings. Um, if what you are saying is, you know, to say no state should get more than X percent of, you know, uh, current revenue, you know, as as earned, then that makes sense. Uh, rather than an absolute ceiling. States don't all have the same revenue base. And the states with more revenue might be able to raise large loans through bonds. Uh, so long as that doesn't you know, amount to a large percentage of the revenue that they can be taking for granted to get. Mm. Well, Mr. Tiber, the DMO seems to think that there are enough measures already put in place. I mean, they mentioned the fact that they're working with the SEC, uh, one of the institutions they're working with, to check that excessive uh, check excessive bond issues. I mean, in your opinion, uh, are those measures enough? Well, I, if you ask me, I would say that uh, the access of the states to the bond market is still uh, is is not sufficient. I, I'm not. I'm not worried that too many states have access to the debt market. I think not enough states have access to the debt market. Mm. Well, the, the federal government has, you know, a lot more access to the debt market than the state governments. There are some states that have practically no access to the debt market. Right. Well, Mr. Tibber, if there was a debt ceiling, where do you think it will be? It will be some percentage of the revenue that they expect to raise you know, a debt ratio rather than the debt ceiling. You know, the federal government can raise the issue treasury bills, the states cannot. You know, the only way the, the states can access money from debt market is through bonds. So I think that it might be a bit premature to be raising alarm about states' access to the bond market. Because you don't want the states to use the debt market at all. Mm, but I have to ask, I mean, in your opinion, are the states using the money they borrow well? I mean, uh, uh, he, the DMO, uh, head of the DMO, he did mention the fact that they should also rely on internally generated revenue. Of course, their federal allocations do come in as well. Uh, uh, many of these states uh, put up these bonds for infrastructure development. Are they using that money for what they're meant to be using it for? We have 36 states, you know, to deal with. And you cannot make general statements. You have to look at states, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, if 15 out of 36 states are borrowing, I don't think that's enough grounds for anybody to begin to raise a lot. Mm. Well, also the because issue... you don't want the states to borrow at all. The, okay, there's an issue, of course, on the other hand, uh, uh, the federal allocations plus the internally generated re revenue. Is it enough for states uh, 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 to participate in this whole federal government transformation agenda? I know Lagos State uh, borrows and has used that money uh, to boost, you know, the state's standing uh, when it comes to infrastructure. So uh, is the money they receive from federal allocations and, of course, uh, some of the internally generated revenue enough? There's that question as well. Well, um, a few states get more than enough money from this, you know, uh, federation allocations. About six states, you know, get more than enough revenue from 
and about three or four states get you know reasonable sums from internally generated revenue. But the remaining 36 states seem not to get enough from federal allocations, and most of them don't have the internal, inter internal revenue base. And so those would require debt. So you, you can divide the states into groups, those who get sizable sums from federal allocations, those who don't, those who get significant sums from internally generated revenue, they won't be more than three or four, and those who don't. So most of the states, about 30 of the states, will uh, find access to the debt market very, very useful. So it's it's the the it's only a minority of the states that may not require, you know, access to the debt market. The federal government also, you know, depends quite a lot on borrowing from the debt markets. Mm. So I don't see why the states, you know, should be, you know, bad from using the debt market. Mm, well, it certainly seems there, Mr. Terry, but like you feel like uh, uh, talking about a debt ceiling right now is just not. We're not talking about it at the right time. Well, thank you both so much for joining us uh, uh, on the show. That was uh, Ayo Terry, the CEO of Economic Associates.